Hello and thanks for joining. You're welcome back to the channel. Let's quickly see some of the tools you can use on a Windows 11 or Windows 10 PC to troubleshoot your network connectivity. So let's go straight to the PowerShell. PowerShell, let's run so right click on that run as admin you can use the terminal as well so but i'm working with uh, powershell for this so first command let's go straight to it uh, we need to check do we even have an ip address assigned so let's see how do we check that we use ip config hit enter you can see yes we do so ipv4 address that's the address we've got, 192.168.64.17. And then you can see things like the IPv6 uh, address, the link local address, and subnet mask, also the default gateway. So this is a VM, so it's essentially a network that is created by the virtualization software I'm using, UTM in this case. The next command is the ping command. So this is essentially checking if we have connectivity to a particular destination if we have the ip address so that's ping we can try the default gateway of the vm on this uh, the, the vm we're using here so this 192.168.64.1 hit enter you can see we're able to get to the default gateway which is fine but we can also check if we can go out to the internet so google.com fine we're getting a response from uh, google that's that's fine it means we're able to go out to the internet next up is ns lookup so this will essentially give us the dns host uh, the host name it will look up a particular ip address a mapping of ip address and host name so same or we can use starlink.com any domain anyways so so you can see uh, the the name is starlink.com and this is the the ip address the next command is trace route so trace route is trace rt on windows so trace rt we can go to say google.com so this is basically tracing the routes it will take to get to uh, one of the uh, Google servers that is closest to us. So let's see, it's trace, it's doing that starting from the 192.168.64.1, which is my uh, machine, essentially. That's the, de the default gateway. And then the first server next. So it keeps trying to get, it's going to trace each each hub so this this is the hub count if you like so each one of these are uh, the hubs it tra it takes to get to google.com so that's it trace complete you can see uh, the results as shown so next command is net start so next net start is network statistics so net start we can give the option dash p for protocol so let's say tcp we just want to see the statistics network statistics of the tcp protocol so you can see the state what's the local address what's the foreign address local address is our address the address of this windows machine essentially and the foreign address and then the state what's the state of the connection is it established is it closed you get to see that as well next up is ARP, Address Res Resolution Protocol, so ARP-A, what do we get from ARP? It's essentially a mapping of IP address to MAC addresses that are known to this system at the moment. So we have the first one here, 192.168.64.1 is the default gateway of this particular uh, Windows machine. And this is the physical address, the type, it's assigned dynamically. Then you've got the, the static ones as well. Next up is route command. So route will show you the routing table. This is route print. In, on Windows, it's route print. So route print will give you 
IPv4 and IPv6. So this is where we typed the command. We entered the command here, so route print. So you can see the list of uh, interfaces and then the IPv4 routing table. So it starts with uh, active routes. So we've got the network uh, destination, network destination, the net mask, gateway interface, and the metric that it's going to use to get to that route. This is in a way similar to what you get from a routing table retrieved on a router, basically. So IPv6 route table, I don't have any act, uh, IPv6 connectivity. These are just uh, link local IP addresses that were not assigned by me uh, statically or even dynamically by a DHCP server. So, but route print will show you uh, that uh, output. Next up is get net adapter. So this will just give you information about get net adapter will give you information about what network interface uh, you have that's active right now. So the description is the Red Hat virtual virtual IO uh, Ethernet adapter that I have because this is a VM actually. So this is a MAC address and then the speed is 10 gigabits per seconds. Next is get net TCP connection. So you would see what TCP connections are active currently. So you, you that's where you see the local, let me expand this, local address, a local the port, the remote address, uh, remote port, the state as well. So if I scroll down, let's look for IP. So this is the IP of this computer. So these are some of the machines, some of the websites or the servers it's connected to securely, of course, 443, and then some of the con con um, the, the state which is established, and you can see the applied settings, you can see it says it's internet connectivity for some of this. So that's the get net TCP connection. Up next is the host name command you can just say host name to see what well your host name is which is uh, windows 11 pro for my windows 11 machine next is more like uh, the next command is more like a bonus that you can use with uh, the ping command that's just you trying to see what dns server is the closest to you so you can use the IP address of this DNS servers. For example, Google is 8.8.8.8. Then Cloudflare as well is 1.1.1. Uh, so for instance, we can try the Google DNS server, right? So if we're trying to ping 8.8.8, .8 that's Google DNS server. So we can see the maximum is 49 milliseconds and then the average is 44 milliseconds. We can do the same thing with, with the Cloudflare server, the DNS server, and just essentially compare and see which one is uh, the best DNS server to use. So you can see 85 milliseconds maximum, and then the average is 71 milliseconds, minimum is 60 milliseconds. So if you go back to the Google one, the minimum is 36 milliseconds. So um, obviously, the Google DNS server in this case is the best option you would want to use as your default DNS server if you're trying to connect with this Windows machine. So that's it. Thank you once again for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, turn on your notification. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.